Nikon actually has a structure to it. And so the core structure are these three questions. And the first question is, what have I received from others? Or if you're doing Nikon on a person, if, if you were doing Nikon on your wife, Nick, it would be, what, what have I received from my wife? The second question is, what have I given? Um, and the third question is, what troubles and difficulties have I caused others? So those, that's really, it's a very simple um, framework, which uh, it can be used, and I've, I've worked with children as young as five years old who can easily understand those questions and actually work with that type of reflective process. Um, but to, to kind of jump into the particular application to our situation right now, you know, I recently wrote a, a poem, and um, I think that there's two, to me, there's kind of two directions we can go in that I feel are, are somewhat off track. And one direction is, is the direction of looking at our circumstances and just seeing only the problems and the suffering and the difficulties. Yes. And, um, and that's, that's a very seductive path right now because um, we're, we're challenged by a lot of, of uh, uh, difficulties and, and problems and potential things that might come up as this unfolds. The other path that I think I've, I see is people kind of putting a sugar coating on this, that it's, it's creating these wonderful opportunities and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's opening up a, a chance to remove the pollution from the atmosphere. And I'm, I'm not saying that there aren't opportunities or that the, the atmosphere is, isn't uh, incurring less pollution, but I think that that can be a more Pollyannish type of path, right? Where, where we don't um, see that there are real problems that we're facing. And so I tried to use this Nikon process to think about um, uh, this idea, which originally comes from a Benedictine monk by the name of David Steindl Rast, Brother David Steindl Rast, who's based, I think, in Austria. Um, and uh, he, said some, he, he writes a lot uh, about gratitude, and he said something once that really stayed with me. He said that uh, we can't be thankful for everything, uh, but we can, in any moment, we can find something to be thankful for, right? And I think he, he said that in response to somebody asking him, well, can you be thankful for war? You know, can you be thankful for violence? Or, or today he might be asked, can you be thankful for, for a, a pandemic? <laughs> yes. But that was his, his response. And I think it's a wonderful response because. Um, you know, we, we can't be thankful for um, all these people getting sick and being quarantined and um, suffering with illness and, and in some cases dying. We can't be thankful for that. But we can be thankful for all of the healthcare workers, the doctors and the nurses and the nurses' aides and the people who are working on the front lines, right, um, under very, very difficult conditions. Uh, without, in many cases, the kind of equipment they need, the kind of medical technology they need. There's no um, real treatment for this, this virus at this point. So we can be thankful that there are people out there who are um, making great sacrifices and taking great risks to try to ultimately um, protect us and, and take care of other people, but also protect those of us who are, are isolated um, from this disease. Uh, so that is something we can be thankful for. And I think we can, as I wrote this poem, I went through that kind of a list. You know, we, um, we can't be thankful for, uh, in the United States, kind of the, uh, the economy crashing, um, but we can be thankful that there is a safety net, that there's unemployment insurance, and that, there's, uh, that the government is trying to uh, provide people with, with financial support, um, that we have, we, most of us, uh, many of us have connections with people in our community or church or family um, who wouldn't let us starve to death as a homeless person on the street. Um, so we can be thankful for those things, even, even though we can't be thankful for what's happening economically around the world. And, um, uh, and just even in my own situation, you know, I, I, I can be thankful that I, I live in a comfortable place. I'm surrounded by uh, woods, so I can actually go out in the woods each day. I have internet access, which is how we're talking right now. I have electricity. Um, I have uh, happen to be living with 
two women who are great cooks, <laughs> so I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually eating quite well. And I, I'm a baker, so um, I come from a line of bakers in our family, so I, I bake sourdough breads. And um, so I have a lot to be thankful for, even though my life has changed dramatically and I have my own losses and things that I miss. Mm. Um, uh, I can actually find things to be thankful for. And I think that path is that what I, what in Buddhism, they call it the middle way, but it's, it's the idea that we acknowledge the suffering of the situation, but we see that the situation is more than just suffering. Okay. Right? Yeah. That there are also um, things that we can appreciate and be thankful for within the context of the, the suffering and the, the challenges that are going on right now. 